In this tutorial we'll take a look at creating the toolpaths for the three-legged table assembly you can see on the screen. The vectors used in this example were created in a previous project that can be accessed through the related videos. And we'll start this particular tutorial by opening that particular file. So file open and we're going to take the three-legged table drawing.crv file and open that up and we can see there are a selection of vectors that form the different components for the three-legged table. So what we're going to do is move it directly on to the machining. So from the top I'll move through to the machining tab and we can see that we're presented by a, a selection of icons on the right hand pane and we're going to start by taking a look at the material setup. And in this case we're going to be using a three quarter inch material our XY data will be in the lower left hand corner and with respect to the Z0 given the fact that I believe my material may have a, an inconsistent finish on the top I prefer to specify my Z0 from the machine bed rather than from the material surface as I'm not too sure of the exact thickness so machine bed in this case would give us a a better result when coming to machine through to the spoil board uh, following on from that we need to be aware of our rapid and home start home positions making sure obviously the home position is above our rapid heights before we move on to create any toolpaths let's take a look at what the vectors on the screen actually represent well we have three leg vectors which are shown here and each of them have a large deep slot in with a t-bone fillet at the bottom so those three pieces will slot together they also include some tenons here also accommodating some dog bone fillets and if we move across to the middle we can see there is a base and a top and these have mortise slots in also with dog bone fillets so altogether these five pieces come together to form the three legged table now a couple of things we need to be uh, aware of is the uh, fit so we may need to look at uh, applying an allowance when machining because essentially we will have a tenon so that's trying to fit into a slot so we need to be aware of the allowances that we should use there and also we need to be aware of how we're going to fix this to the table in this case I won't be using any tabs because I'm assuming that the piece will either be um, with a vacuum bed or stuck down onto the table so we will not be using tabs in this case okay so with that we can now move through to consider how we're going to machine this now my initial thought is to profile all the vectors in one big toolpath so I need to actually select all those vectors now there's three different ways you can do that you can either deal with edit selection select all vectors alternatively you can box pick over all the items or finally you can hit Control a on the keyboard and that will also select the vectors moving across now to select our type of toolpath we're going to pick the profile toolpath now and we're going to start by considering the cutting depths now despite the fact that we have set the Z0 to be from the machine bed this doesn't affect how we define our cutting depths this will still be from the material surface downwards so our start depth is correct at zero our cut depth is should be the material thickness now if I didn't know what that would what currently is I can just type in Z equals and that will give us that material thickness okay so moving down now I'm going to select my tool so I'm just going to pick this out from the menu and it's going to be a quarter inch end mill and based upon the parameters for that tool it needs six passes now those parameters are set on the conservative side of hardwood and actually for this particular case I know that I can get away with a little bit of a greater pass depth so with that I'm going to go across to the edit function here and just increase that pass depth from 0.125 to 0.2 as I OK that now you can see the number of passes has dropped from 6 to 4 and if we take a closer look at the passes now you can see that it's evenly divided those four passes over that uh, depth of 0.75 so it's not gone over the designated 0.2 now if I wanted to correctly define that as being 0.2 I could say maintain exact tool depth set passes in which case we've got a 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2
0.2 and then 0.15 okay but in this case i'm quite happy to have an even pass depth so i'm just going to set that and okay we're going to move down now to the allowance offset now this is going to be very important because we have our more our tenons that will need to fit into the mortise slots so with an offset of zero it means that we have a sort of direct mating of those surfaces therefore it may be difficult to actually fit this together so what i'm going to do is i'm going to expand our slots uh, by 20 thou either side and we will also decrease our tenons by 20 thou on either side so i'm going to specify minus 0.02 okay and now we're going to move further down the form i don't need to add any tabs in this case i'm not going to bother looking at any ramps for the minute and i'm just going to specify this as cut out and now we're going to calculate so immediately we have the tool pass shown on the screen and if we just do this with a horizontal sort of tiled view we can see the 2d view and the 3d view now it should be noted that the um, if we zoom into the tool path here we can see the tool path we can see the direction of the tool and we can also see the start and end point of the closed profile if we come up to the top menu we can actually draw on the tool path okay as a solid line so we can see here if we zoom in that we are overcutting the profile by the required 20 thou okay and that's happening both in terms of the sort of tenons here and if we have a look at the slots we are also overcutting so we would have plenty of material uh, in order to get uh, the tenon into the slot okay so that just shows really um, how we can use the 2d view to draw the tool path over the top and it's a great way of actually checking that you've applied the allowance to the correct side okay so with that now we've got our 3d view and i'm just going to show that full screen and we could go ahead now and simulate that so i'm just going to uh, adjust the speed and we'll just simulate that now okay so we can see those sort of slots being cut and the perimeters and everything seems to be okay but there are a number of issues that we really need to address before we can move forward and generate any G code. Now, the first thing that uh, sort of concerns me is the fact that we've got our sort of uh, profile for our tabletop quite close to one of our legs. So I'd actually like to move that. Now, we can see the toolpath there on the screen, and I'll actually just show that as dotted. And I'm going to, whilst that toolpath's there, I'm going to come in now and just pick the vectors that represent the item that I want to move. So I've got that selected now. I'm just going to go into the transform mode by clicking that and come into the middle and start to move that. So I'm gonna hold the Alt key down now and I'm just gonna move it horizontally, okay? So I'm just gonna move that across and let go. And you can see at the moment the toolpath is in a different location because I need to recalculate that toolpath, okay? So with that now, I'm just gonna come in now and just double click on the toolpath and just recalculate. And you can see that now the simulation does not match my new toolpath. OK, so I'm going to reset that preview now and just play the new toolpath. And you can see that we've allowed a, a much larger gap between our tabletop and our leg. So that's uh, issue one that we're addressing. Now, the second issue, which in many ways is a bigger issue, is how we're going to cope with machining the slots because currently we're profiling all the way down through and as you can see these are loose components the center of the slots and as we go down they may become unstable and they may violate the tool and we'll get a bad finish so we need to think of really a better way of machining those and one way is to consider that really as a pocket and to machine all of the material away as we're moving down through the pocket so we're not worried about the material breaking away and causing an issue okay so with that i'm just going to go to the tiled view here and we are going to just look at these separately so we've already got the cutout toolpath okay and now what i want to do is go ahead and create a separate toolpath just for the slots okay so with this i'm just going to close out now and we're going to come into the pocket toolpath and I'm just going to pick basically the items that represent the slots so with this I'm just going to pick these items here and then shift and pick these items just here okay so we've selected those slots now so I'm happy with that I'm going to come across to our parameters here now our start depth and cut depth are correct 
I'm going to select the same quarter inch end mill. And once again, likewise, I want to edit the pass depth from 0.125 to be point to be 0.2. OK, so I'm going to set that as OK at 0.2 and we need to apply a pocket allowance. So it's going to be a negative of 20 thou. And in this case, it's going to be called slots. And we can calculate that toolpath. So we can see that's good. If we zoom in now, you can see that we are clearing the material away in those particular slot regions. But the problem now is, is I've got a double toolpath because I also have the same sort of toolpath with the cutout, which is just profiling these slots. So with that now, I'm just going to come back and switch on the cutout. OK, and I'm just going to pop that open now and deselect the vectors. So basically all I'm going to do is pick the ones that I definitely want to profile. So I pick those items there now. OK, so we've selected those five outer vectors and I'm going to calculate that. OK, and we can see that that has removed the profile there. OK, so I need to reset now my preview and we'll just show this in full screen. OK, so we've got our cut out there, which is the five outer profiles and then we've got our slots separately there. OK, so with that, I'm now going to preview all the toolpaths. So let me just change the view there and we can just preview all those toolpaths and we can see that being cut away there. Now this raises also another issue of the ordering of the toolpaths because currently the slots are being done after the cutout, whereas in theory we should be doing the slots before. So with that, I need to just move this up the tree. You can see here at the moment is the, the second of the two toolpaths. So I'm going to put this to the top now, which means when I go to write this out as a single GCO file, since we're using the same tool, then the slots will be done first and followed by the cutout. So just bear in mind that the order of the toolpaths when you are going to post this out will affect the machining order as well. So just be aware of that when you're outputting the toolpaths. Now this tutorial has just skirted on the parameters of, of the profile toolpath, but if you want to take a, a greater look, maybe look at maybe adding tabs or being able to change the order um, or other parameters uh, affecting the profile toolpath, then please refer to the profile toolpath guide, which is one of the linked videos to this particular presentation. Now the final thing for us to do is of course save this particular project. So I'm going to come up to File, Save As, and I'm going to save this as the three-legged table 2D underscore toolpass.cfv file so I can come back to it and if required post the toolpass out at a later point. So I'm going to save that now and now the project is saved.